One day I will overthrow the house throne and lead this nation as it was meant to be led. I have seen glimpses of the future, and with the four of you by my side, there's almost nothing we can't achieve. Before moving forward, um, I want to know, do I have your loyalty? Welcome to Dungeon Die Hards. This is session four. You find yourselves on the, the main deck of the Wormwood. The battle has concluded. <clears throat> you can hear the captain. Everybody line up. Being a captain is, well, it's sometimes like being a father. You see your family grow and you, you grow in pride. Now, unfortunately, we have two ships and we're going to have to part way for a, for a short amount of time. And your new captain, for some of you, is going to be... Mr. Plug, think of him like the mother in this family. Now you're gonna be traveling with mommy back to Port Peril, and we're gonna sell this ship. Then we'll be back for you in a month or so, uh, after we take care of some business in the Isles. Master Scourge and Mr. Plug, go ahead and select your new crew. Uh, at that point, Master Scourge, with a baleful look in his eye, he says, uh, why don't you four shitheads go ahead and step forward? We're going to need somebody to clean the pooper. And he's uh, clearly pointing to the four of you. I immediately stepped forward before he even pointed at me. <laughs> it be my honor. Mr. Plug walks around with his giant giant arms and his revolver in hand, and uh, he just starts bopping him over the head with his, uh, with his revolver. Yes, you'll do nicely. I think you're the one. Picking uh, this men that he's friendly with. Unfortunately... We don't have enough men to take all of the Wormwood onto the man's promise. So we're going to have to take some of the new Swabbies. And he looks over to the man's promise crew and you see him take the eight biggest that he can find. As he's like pointing to the new guys. Yeah, you heard him. Get out of line. <laughs> First of all, give me a diplomacy check and then give me an intimidation check for the, the new crewmates. You want to be part of this crew and live? You better tow the line and get up. Do your jobs. I'll give it a plus four. Yeah, they're pretty on edge. So You guys are my bitches now. <laughs> Under four, Master Plug, of course, and I bow to Mr. Plug. <laughs> four things you notice almost immediately. First, uh, you see that Captain Harrigan is just, he looks very pleased that you're not his problem anymore. <laughs> um, <laughs> second, you see Mr. Plug seems kind of flattered. Third, you see just supreme, baleful hatred from <laughs> Master Scorch. <laughs> And then fourth, obviously, you see that the Rewardian uh, Man's Promise Sailors, as a lot, they're all just scared because they don't understand the power dynamics that are at play. Uh, <laughs> Step up right behind one and put my face right in his ear. You eyeballing me, boy? <laughs> you want some? You want some? Okay, now hold on. <laughs> Shortly after you do this, you can see that uh, Master Scourge is like very aware of Mr. Plug's pleasure, uh, seeing you just being his toady immediately. Uh, you see him pull out his whip and he just <laughs> cracks you on the back. Uh, it only cracks you for three. Get your scurvy arse back in line. I be the first mate to this new ship, and you don't speak unless spoken to. And he gets just inches from your face. Is that understood, you bilge rat? That is perfectly understood, Master Scourge. <laughs> your will is my command. <laughs> And I just go get back in line. Okay, and you just, you see his hand is just shaking. <laughs> okay, um... As I'm standing next to Corbin, I just under my breath, Oh boy, he's got to come. Look at him, lad, don't you worry. Smile and wave, boy, smile and wave. <laughs> Does Mr. Plug have any reaction to that? He just looks amused by the whole situation. Okay, once again, Captain Harrigan is just tickled pink that he doesn't have to deal with your shit anymore. <laughs> Mr. Plug says, All right, new crew, you got two hours to say your goodbyes and then get be on the man's promise. At this point in time, you see Sendara approach Captain Harrigan. May we speak in private? Of course. Uh, then they step up onto the foredeck and uh, everyone just gets it and they all sort of like step out of the way and leave. James, you do note that 
Unfortunately, Crunchy didn't get selected, but Slippery Sai did. Uh, Slippery Sai steps up next to you. Really glad I get to stay with you, Corbin. We've become best of mates. Same, Slippery. Good friends indeed. Just pat him on the back. Good Let's friends. See if we can make something of these new men. Good friends among equals, am I right? Kind of look him up and down. <laughs> yeah, equals for sure. <laughs> Scratches his head. Is that all right, I'm gonna go get my lucky rabbit foot. Don't leave without me. And he sort of starts pattering over with his bare feet. Is there a way that I can loiter, like act like I'm like polishing a handrail or something close enough to hear what uh, Sindar is saying to the captain? Yeah, there's a, there's a lot going on on the on the deck. Um, give me a stealth check or a bluff check, you choose. Hmm, they're both so high. <laughs> so many good options. Yeah. What about disguise self? <laughs> Someone who should be there? <laughs> I'm gonna give you a modifier and also the DC will increase uh, based on how close you want to get. So here, I'll drop Dara up on B2. Um, yeah. So you tell uh, me how close you want to get. The closer you get, the higher the likelihood yeah. of you hearing or the DC the... of the perception. Let's go to there. Alright, DC 15. Go ahead and roll in your perception. <laughs> Somebody's about to get their head blown off. <laughs> uh, as you sort of step up, you can't you can't hear anything uh, very clear. However, uh, Dara kind of like side eyes you and like just shoots a little wink your way. The captain doesn't seem he's facing the other direction. He doesn't seem to notice you. Um, you can choose to go closer if you want. Um, actually, I'm just gonna loiter and make it clear that I'm just waiting to talk to Dara. Uh, we're gonna jump to Cedric. You see Crunchy just, he's sadly sitting in a corner. It looks like he, he has a rat in his hand and he's just shaving it with his razor sharp knife. Oh, hey, seems pretty sad. Mr. Crunchy, follow me. But what about, all right. He, he scratches okay. the rat on the top of the head and sets it down and then stands up. I'm going to the, to the crew quarters where people are like sort of packing up their gear. Follows you. What does this be about? I uh, turn around and I say, it's a real shame about you. You're not making it on. I hope you survive. I slip him a couple of gold. Oh, that's nice of you. Uh, I'm gonna give you a plus one to uh, diplomacy <laughs> checks with Crunchy moving forward. <laughs> you want to keep that one at the top Excellent. of your character sheet next to your yeah, name. Yeah, make sure you make a map. Definitely. Jean has been taken into Dara's uh, her cabin. Um, I'll go to where his body was and put my hand in the blood, and then smear it across the stone's face. I would like to go over there with him with the smearing of blood from Jean. He was a good man. Fought to the end to protect Dara. Rest in peace, Jean. Kind uh, of like pull out my pistol and just hold it up. Corbin, as you're like going and like you look at the puddle of blood, it's almost imperceptible, but you can actually see the blood slowly disappearing. Are you seeing this? Looking over at Mad Maddie? Ah, uh, yes. Interesting. I guess, where did they take Jean's body? Dara's cabin. May I ask uh, Corbin to come on down that way with me? I uh, let's get to the bottom of this. Pick up like a little bit of blood. It smells unnatural. <laughs> Give it a little taste. Mm. That tastes pretty normal. <laughs> Okay, um, you get down, you see her door is the, just right there. She's still up talking with Captain. Dunk, dunk, dunk. Jean, you in there? <laughs> yeah, as you gotta try and shake the handle, it's clearly locked. Morvin, you don't happen to have a lockpick, do you? I do have one, but it's a little devastating. I start aiming my gun down at the, the handle. <laughs> yeah, maybe, maybe not. Hey, Gene, you in there? No, no, nothing returns, yeah. <laughs> I did want to break a piece off of that guy, whether it be his hand or the his head. As, as you walked over and did that, you see Long Farthing is uh, just standing there looking at it. He looks like he's studying it. Long Farthing. Excuse me. Yes. Can I have a piece of this giant? You may not. Mm hmm he, got, he sort of looks over at you, and you can just see the light sort of shining through his thing, and you can see just a, a little gleam in his eye. He says, Unless you and Corbin will each give me a vial of your blood. I do my best not to part with my own blood. That's a no from me. 
Okay. He uh, lifts his hand from his book and just waves you away. Yeah, I'll turn around and uh, accidentally walk into its finger as hard as I can. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, give me a bluff check. Oh, solid plus one. Here we go. Right? Okay. 18. Maddie, you clumsy oof. Get over here. <laughs> Damn these old lady bones of mine. Help an old lady up, Corbin. I'm gonna say there's a 30% chance, Jace. Okay. I want uh, high is good for me. <laughs> okay, so lowest was good for me, right? <laughs> yep, <that's laughs> nope. Alright, you bounce off the statue. Clumsy. <laughs> Damn statue, and I kick it. <laughs> In the finger. <laughs> Try to break its finger off. <laughs> Actually, since he shows interest in blood, I actually am going to try and clear up the blood of uh, Gene. But yeah, I'll just grab a piece of cloth from my uh, pack and just start wiping it up. Uh, sounds good. No, he doesn't object. He's solely focused no reaction. on okay. the Vrekka. I'll uh, catch you on the next wave, Crenshaw. Shake his hand. Yeah. You stay tight, poor guy. Scratch his little rat. Yeah, we'll manage. I'll see you soon. Back to you, Isam. Good captain. Well, your arguments are impeccable, Dara. I approve. Just remember your side of the deal, though. He sort of just walks past you as though you don't exist, Isam. I, I bow as low as I can. <laughs> just licking the planks of the ship as he walks by. <laughs> yes. Okay. I hang my head and walk over to Dara. My lady, Dara, I, I have a couple things to bring to your attention. Number one, this, this gash on my face. I fear for not only my life, uh, it should I be left alone without your protection on, on the new ship with Master Scourge. I just know he has it out for me. He already tried to murder me once. I will see to the wound, wound uh, later this evening, Isam. Uh, oh, I, I care not for my own wounds. It's just with this tragedy of Jean, I fear for your life most of all, of course. Well, I was just thinking, is there any way that you could come with me on this other ship? She says, uh, I've just arranged it with Captain Harrigan. Uh, Two steps ahead, as always. We will be returning Jean's body to the Protectorate Templars for a proper burial. Well, as your most devoted and dedicated servant, I feel it's my responsibility now that... Because you all told me that I had to obey the, ca the good captain. And since we're not gonna be around a good captain, I feel that I am free now to pursue my ambition of being your new first guard. And I stand up and pu puff my chest out. <laughs> Give me a diplomacy check. <laughs> okay, um, I'm gonna use my inspiration. Oh. <laughs> Five and a seven. <laughs> your intentions are so noble, Esam. Let me grieve Jean's loss for a while before appointing anyone to that that position. If you would be so kind. I would never try to impose, and there's no replacing him, but I am at your disposal at any time, my, my, lo my lady. She pats your shoulder longingly, very much appreciated, and then she uh, walks past and heads into her cabin. I follow her one step back and one step to the left. <laughs> <laughs> Hand on the hilt of my sword, glaring everybody down. <laughs> That's just a lot. Uh, as soon as you like start following her directly and like are assuming that position uh, in a little bit quieter and more serious tone, she says, uh, "It is very important for the the near future that you appear to have loyalty to to the new captain and to the new crew. Uh, you could get us both in a lot of trouble should you." openly show your allegiance as much as it's appreciated. But how will, how will I protect you? Stay close, but not too close. I just keep her in sight, make sure that if she goes around the corner, I rush around the corner. Uh, as she but sees... I'm, I'm keeping like a whole room space away from her. Okay, so you're keeping her with an eyesight, but you're not obviously following her around. Is that what you're saying? Correct. Correct. Okay. <laughs> Cedric, you see Dara, and she's she's clearly trying to make eye contact with you. And she just, she looks at you and then like gestures uh, to head below deck. Um, and then you okay. see her, instead of walking into her cabin, head towards one of the stairwells. I look to Corbin and I say, uh, could you make sure that no one's looking too closely? Look around. 
I don't think that would be an issue, but I'm on it. Start heading below deck. As he's leaving, kind of grab his arm. I'll give this information to you, and you can bring it up as you see it. It looked as though Jean's blood was disappearing at, uh, unnaturally, speedily on the deck. Disappearing? Um, can I get a knowledge history from both of you? Answering Cedric's question, I don't know how else to describe it. It was there, and then it was leaving. Okay, give me one second. I just have to type something out. Sorry, Steven's gonna write a quick textbook because that's how much you know about this. <laughs> it's 73. Actually, Isam, can you just give me a knowledge arcana? Unrelated to that. Is there any way that we could just have three of you guys mute me and Jacob, and then we'll switch to Daniel afterwards? Cedric, um, you are pulled back to stories of the, the Gray Fox Company. Um, there were times, many, many tales of heroes dying in the Gray Fox Company, um, and there were hints or insinuations that their bodies would actually like dissolve over time and that they were being teleported somewhere else. Those rumors haven't been substantiated, other than there were several occasions where people very publicly died and then there are some discrete references of, of their bodies actually vanishing slowly over time. This wasn't like their bodies were taken to a temple and then they were resurrected by a cleric or something right. like that? Their bodies vanished and then they showed up later in time. Kind of okay. Thing. Okay, dope. So if everyone but Esam could mute, mute me and Esam and then not talk, that would be cool. Esam, as the good captain walked by, um, you noticed... He looks like he has his bullet pouch, is like wide open. Um, and you notice some engravings uh, that definitely were of the school of magic of teleportation on his bullets. Like an aggressive, offensive kind of teleporting. Uh, like, I choose where you go when my bullet hits you kind of teleporting. Interesting. So when he said, you slippery bitch. Hmm. Take it that way you will. Okay, Cedric. Dara is there, just around one of the corners, and you see her just like looking out one of the one of the windows. Cedric, can you make sure that Corbin, Isam, and Maddie, as well as yourself, uh, are the ones who lift and carry Jean's casket uh, onto the man's promise? Thumbs kind of behind my belt loops and uh, say, "Going to be lighter than expected." Uh, kind of give a smile. Perhaps. I bow my head. Okay. Would it be? Prudent, considering you're trying to keep our loyalties hidden. Yes, the good captain will be very busy, and I can't have anybody else talking. As my lady wishes. She says one more thing, Cedric. Can you make sure that none of you do anything too hasty in the near future? Concerning the life of this dear Master Scourge? Yes. You do understand he's actively tried to have us... Execute. I do, but we shouldn't speak any more of this. The, the ship has ears. Hmm. I see. We'll do our best. As Dara goes into her room, I'm gonna wait a minute or something and then go knock on her door real quick. As you, you knock on the door, you, you see it open very slightly. Even with just seeing this much of her face, you can see pure exasperation. <laughs> I like look around. A lady, we must speak cannot be, I can't speak openly here, may I come in? I see subtlety is lost on you. <laughs> no, gonna... yeah, I'm definitely not a subtle, what? <laughs> Can you stay as far away from this cabin as possible until we separate ways and try not to talk to me <laughs> until until we're aboard the man's promise and outside of, outside of the ship? I'm going to say this as straightforward as I can. Just because you can't see anyone listening doesn't mean that people aren't listening on this ship. Right. We'll talk later then. Wink. Wonderful. <laughs> Door closes. <laughs> and, and, and a little bit more than harder than it probably should have. Okay. <laughs> uh, uh, I go stand on the other side of the room and cross my arms and stare at her door. Okay. Uh, I'm also giving you a minus one on diplomacy checks with Sendara. <laughs> I want to talk to Cedric afterward. Did she have any insights into the disappearing blood? I'm going to walk with him over to an area where maybe there's extra flapping of like sails or like a strong breeze or any area of the boat that's like 
kind of uncharacteristically loud. Yeah, there's some woodwork going on. People are trying to repair the, the handrails. So <laughs> she didn't share details. However, she does wish for us to be the ones to transfer Sir Jean's body to the other ship. So nothing is said. I say, uh, don't be surprised if the casket is lacking. Aye. Black. More than his, more than his blood, probably is disappearing. I see. I'll be inconspicuous. You have my word. One final note, Corbin. Lady Dara does not wish for us to take any actions against figures that might be convenient for us in the near future. I think I know the person you be speaking <laughs> of. <laughs> I told her we'd do our best. Kind of nod my head. Sounds like a plan. But his time's coming, you can be sure of it. Head over, Mad Maddie. Maddie! And I have a word with you. Lady Dara wishes for us to be the one to move Jean's body to the other. I'd be honored. I expected nothing less. Also, she'd like us to be. not do anything too hasty concerning our, our dear new leaders. I'll do what I can, but opportunity knocks, so to say. I'll open the door. <laughs> I'd expect nothing less. <laughs> good, good. Anything else, Cedric? Did you need any healing? <laughs> no, I believe I've. <laughs> no, come, come now, come now. Isom, <laughs> may I have words? Nod my head, but I'm just only half paying half attention to him because I'm staring at the door. Her ladyship wishes for us to be the one to transfer over Jean's body. Like, feel kind of upset that she told him about it, but not me, and I'm just like, Yeah, yeah, she already told me that. Uh, <laughs> what else did she say? Excellent. I'm sure she also informed you that we shouldn't be too hasty doing anything brash with our new captain and first mate. Well, of course she told me that. What else? <laughs> Just that she could barely keep from sharing her love from you. Well, it's not the message she gave me, but I'm glad she's telling other people. <laughs> she, like, quite spurred up until this moment. <laughs> <laughs> now my chest is all puffed out. Oh, well. Well, thank you. Thank you. I'll, I'll keep all that in mind, even though she already definitely told me it, and uh, we'll make that the plan. Wink, wink. <laughs> you don't actually need to say wink when you wink, by the way. <laughs> it's somewhat little, more subtle. At this point, you just hear a gunshot off in the air. Alright, you scurvy swabbies. Get your arses over on the man's promise. As the gunshot went off, I just found the nearest new guy. I just grabbed him by the back of the lapel. You heard the man! Get on over to the man's promise! I um, him in the can you give me a diplomacy check? Mr. Plug actually seems kind of pleased. Um, Dara steps out of her room and uh, she sort of, Would the four of you be kind enough to, to help carry my things? Great. She says, uh, if you could take uh, Jean's casket first, that would be much appreciated. Uh, Make sure I'm in the front. I'm also in front. Okay. As you wish, my lady. And I reach down and grab it. Okay. Um, as you guys lift it up, it's actually really full. Or it feels like really heavy. Oh, I give <laughs> Steve like a glare. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Pushing over at Cedric. <laughs> yeah, like what the fuck, Cedric? <laughs> <laughs> um, you guys carry it a across, n no problem. Uh, she also asked you to make several other trips carrying the rest of her stuff. When we're transferring over some of her stuff. Quickly, like, kind of look at stuff, anything that might be of interest. Gotcha. Let me roll a perception for you, real quick. I'd like to know if I notice uh, Cedric being a pervert rifling through her things. <laughs> Give me a. I wouldn't call it a bluff. Give me a stealth check, Cedric, as you're, like, subtly trying to do that. I'll give you a plus three. Ooh, seven. Uh, Maddie, as you, you're the third one to, to leave the room, you see Cedric kind of seems to be waiting for other people to leave. He could be going a lot faster. He looks like he's being lazy is what he looks like. I'm also interested, Cedric. I'd like to know what she wears. 
I stick around and just stare at him. <laughs> well, in that case, just make sure no one's looking. Except me, of course. Okay, I'm glancing, uh, mostly, biggest thing I'm looking for any texts or anything like that. And really, I will keep a lookout, like I was interested as well. Um, the, the big thing that you know, there's a bunch of books, um, a lot of them are on, like, religion, uh, specifically religions of the, the Eastern Sea, uh, religions of Blood Cove, uh, just, like, a bunch of different, like, religions that are all, like, native to this area. Yeah. Um, but there is, uh... A small black book that has engraved in like beautiful gold lettering the histories of House Quinn. I quickly pull out the book. Um, as you open it, uh, aboard the actual front cover, you just see this beautiful tree uh, that has like Quinn written in it. I, I look for any like any information that has like diagrams, and then I want to I want to study quickly and look through all the names that I recognize related to her tree. Gotcha. So you're trying to memorize her family tree, essentially? Correct. Maddie, you're actually uh, surprised when you hear uh, Dara's voice. Everything going on okay over there? And you see that she was up on this railing right here that was above her room on the other side of the ship, and you didn't you didn't notice her at all. Yes. Uh, Cedric and I were left with the heavier stuff. Bastard allies of ours think they're comedians. All right, give me a bluff check. 18. Uh, she, she looks like she believes you. Well, that wasn't very gentlemanly of them. Yes, I found they're not gentlemen. But they're still my friends. I'll take what I can get. Cedric, you ready? Left with your legs! <laughs> uh, yes, yes, I'm coming. Okay, I'm gonna slide the book back and then trade it for a different box that is heavier. One insight that you instantly know, one big name. Barold Quinn was a famed general of the Shiliacs or the Chain Lickers. So her grandfather was one of the like leading generals in their emancipation from the Treadsif. So Treadsif and Gray Fox Company conquered the, the Chain Lickers. Her ancestors are Chain Lickers combined with Treadsif uh, nobility. Okay, so it was like conquer nobility and conqueror nobility? Yep, correct. That's where she comes from, and her grandfather was like super famous, and that's where her house grew into prominence, was he uh, turned into like a general and just a total badass. He freed the chain lickers from Treadsif control after the plague. Um, you know about that guy, Barrel Quinn, he's a big deal. <laughs> Back to the back to the gameplay. All right, so you guys carry the stuff over the rest of it as the last of the people get over there And the ship starts to sail away uh, The good captain says uh, just like a family. We'll all be back together again soon. Worry not he Pops a, a farewell shot off into the sky as the ships separate when he shoots I pull out my gun and shoot again till we meet again <laughs> Mr. Plug pops a shot off, till we meet again. Uh, but he says it louder as though it was his idea. Um, <laughs> you best not be shooting on this ship without permission from here on out, Corbin. Aye, aye, Captain. <laughs> Can I look? give like a bow? Oh uh, yeah, he likes that too. <laughs> Scourge just seems jealous as a scorned wife. Mr. Plug says, gather round ye barnacles. Even though our time together will be being short, we're not gonna have the lackadaisical nature of, of the Wormwood on this ship. We'll be working double time as we have half the crew. Uh, anyone who can do math knows you have just about the exact same size crew as, as the Wormwood. <laughs> he says, uh, if I see so much as a splinter on this deck on the morrow that could catch into my boot, it'll be the cat for ya. And then Scourge sort of steps around and the four of you shitheads, you'll be cleaning the poop deck. And if anyone tells you to do anything on this ship, you say, aye, aye, sir. Now is that understood? Aye, aye, aye sir. Aye, aye, sir. Ah! He looks to one of the, from one of the new conquered sailors. He's, you look awfully tired. Why don't you pick one of these men to take your stuff down? <laughs> one of the, the new guys, he looks like pumped that he's not the, the bottom of the rung slams his cotton belongings into your chest and says, Get that below deck, worm. I didn't hear aye aye sir from you, Cedric. Holds out his 
his hand. My apologies, Captain. I wasn't as loud as I should be. Clearly my fault. Aye, aye, sir. I be the first mate, not the captain. You need to learn the ranks, worm. Fair enough. Now do as you're told. And uh, all of the uh, the other men sort of like look around. Uh, and then one by one they start handing you guys their stuff to, to bring up below decks. When he hands you the hey, thing... Sir. As they hand me their stuff, I am going to throw it on the deck and step up to Mr. Plug and be like, Mr. Plug, Captain, this ain't right. We're old hands with this crew and these are new hands. I'm trying to respect Master Scourge, but this ain't right. It's not the way it's supposed to be. Give me a diplomacy check. That's 13. <laughs> oh, 14, actually. Master Scourge and I are a unified pair. And he be the first mate. And you do be a swabby. I'll spare you the cat this time, but next time you disobey the Scourge, you're gonna get Scourged. You see Scourge just nodding his pump with being backed by the captain. As you say, Captain. You say. I'll pick up the stuff. So, the next uh, few days, um, I'll just let you know that Master Scourge is making sure that you guys get the absolute shittiest jobs on the ship. Is it Master Scourge that's assigning us all these duties, or is it the other crewmates? Now it's kind of both. Any shitty thing that somebody doesn't want to do, they tell you guys to do it. It's late on the fifth night that you guys uh, have been here. All your hands and knuckles are just raw from scrubbing stuff and doing shitty tasks. Just as you guys are sort of, of heading in, Maddie, Sendara, you can just hear her voice in one of the hallways. Can you gather the group and uh, meet in the build in roughly two hours? Got it. Will do. Um, yeah, I just work my way over to uh, each of them and just let them know. Build two hours. Lady Sandara. You see, you see Sandara is just down there, uh, moonlit by one of the windows. Thank you so much for your patience and for your cooperation. I haven't been very forthcoming with you, and for that I apologize. Uh, the good captain had magic via long farthing throughout the whole other ship where he could see and hear in most places. And so I haven't been able to speak openly with you. Well, let me just say, that fucking son of a bitch is the one who got Jean killed. She, she kind of looks at you, I'm sorry? He had speak. bullets with teleportation spells so he could send send that monster right to Jean when he wanted to. She she looks skeptical. She, she pulls out a pad and a paper. She says, uh, would you mind uh, just illustrating what you saw? I clear my throat, looking very pompous, and I draw her the symbol. This is why I was so adamant about watching your back, Lady Dara. And you saw this where? Where did you see this symbol? On the bullets on his pouch as he walked past me. She seems very impressed that you were able to know what that meant. Well, first, let me tell you a little bit about myself. I am the heir to a very powerful family, House Quinn. My family helped free the Shiliac's people from the Treadsif grip after the plague and have been very prominent ever since. Uh, I can give you more details later, but over the past uh, 10 years, I have become a true convert of Besmara, the Pirate Queen. My calling is to become a Pirate Queen uh, in my own right. And over the past few years, through scrying and gentle guidance by Besmara, I have stumbled across the four of you. You have something referred to as the Hero Spark. Your potential is far greater than most people's. You will be able to grow in power and influence in ways that most people will never. Uh, and it was I who selected you to be this round of press-ganged swabbies. And for that, I apologize. You bitch. <laughs> let me just, let me just say, I, I really hope there's a good explanation coming of why we can't put that scourge in the dirt. She says, uh, there is. I guess the next biggest thing is that everything needs to land at, a. Uh, at the right time. She says, we will be mutineering and taking this ship over. You have already earned my trust and, and I appreciate everything you've done for me thus far. And you've all earned spots as officers in what will eventually become one of the greatest fleets of the Shackles. I have a big old grin at that. 
I get a gleam in my eye and I'm rubbing my hands together. Oh, I can't wait to reach down his throat and pull his fucking heart out. <laughs> okay. Uh, one day I will overthrow the house throne and lead this nation as it was meant to be led. I have seen glimpses of the future, and with the four of you by my side, there's almost nothing we can't achieve. Before moving forward, um, I want to know, do I have your loyalty? You said you serve Vesmara. That's good enough for I. I fall to one knee and take her hand and kiss it. You have my life, my heart, and my soul. It's yours, darling. Uh, she looks to you, Maddie. Whether by luck or divine intervention, my goal was to become part of a pirate ship. So I seek not vengeance to you, and I appreciate your uh, support. You have my devotion. And you, Cedric? Yes. You say you wish to become a pirate queen. What does that entail? I want to rule the isle. I will use the Confederation and this fleet for bigger purposes, namely bringing more order to these seas. I will not insult any of your intelligences by lying to you. Damn. This seems awfully hesitant, my lady. <laughs> should I, and I take out my knife, should I take care of him? <laughs> she, she sort of smiles and pats her hand. I pause until they, their exchange goes, and then I say, uh, so am I to understand you do not wish to resummon the Dark Hearts as your ancestors did? My purpose is not to bring back the Chain Demons, no. My family runs a delicate line. I take great pride in House Quinn as well as my Treadsif heritage. I think a marriage of the two will be the most beneficial. But no, I have no intentions of summoning demons. That is good enough for me. You have my loyalty. Great. We've established you have the loyalty of pirates. Um, you see her pull out this uh, box. It's about this big. Um, as she opens it, you see there's four uh, gleaming rings. <laughs> In them. Please put this on. I put it on my right hand on my uh, <laughs> ring finger. To Besmara, the I wed. It's very good. I'm gonna go ahead and put it on. As you guys put the rings on, those of you who do, um, you can instantly see that there is a, uh, a red line that goes directly from the center of your mass to anyone else wearing one of these rings. Um, and you can see that the, le the red line also is. Uh, going towards what appears to be a necklace on Dara's neck. And there's a red line shooting way off out to the west. Southwest. Is that Jean? It is. Will he be joining us later? Uh, it will be some time before he returns, but yes. We have unfinished business, Jean and I. <laughs> I don't want to step on any toes. Are you two romantically involved? No. She looks amused. <laughs> Good. I go, whew! <laughs> she just turns and, and heads up. As you make your way up, you can see that uh, even in the dead of night, the sky in the distance is illuminated by the, the silver and black clouds of storms. You can hear the horrible sound of lightning off in the distance, and you know that you're in the high seas right now. Well, it seems that life is just gonna fuck us up one side down the other here, boys. <laughs> All right, that's the conclusion of the episode.